It's a chilly one everyone. Close to freezing. Minus four, maybe minus five. Some reports are minus eight, but we'll see. Snow's supposed to come tomorrow. I'm back at Loch Dockard. Got here early on this, this afternoon. I'm out of breath, sorry. I've been cutting firewood for the last two hours. <laughs> Keeps you warm. Not a soul about. It is really, really cold. Definitely snow weather. Uh, new tent, Pomoly Yarn Plus, I believe it's called. Uh, first time set out. Haven't done too bad. Pipe could be higher, the stove pipe. I was trying to keep the volume down so the dogs didn't hear me, but look, they still heard me. I'm trying to get them to rest because Stella's stiff because obviously it's so cold. Gonna get stove on in a minute. It gets dark about 10 to 4. So back here to do some searching starting tomorrow. Uh, it's for the missing hiker Neil Skinner that we've been up in previous uh, occasions. He went missing May 20, uh, 2022, which is about 18 months ago. So I'm a bit croaky. It's the cold. I'm just getting over COVID as well. <laughs> it's about gone. It's about gone out of my system. This new variant really knocked me for six. So uh, I'm recovering, let's say. But I, I feel good. It's just getting back into it again, isn't it? Hence why I haven't been out for about three months. About six weeks of them, I was really poorly. And me really poorly, I could hardly walk anywhere or anything. I was so out of breath. I've done a white caught me this time, where the first one was bad, but nothing, not as bad as this. Uh, just before that, I was here, but stopping at the hut. And I put down six days of searching and the wise people will say, well, there was only five videos. That's because of the weather. It was just so, so bad. Heavy rain every day, more or less. So I scrubbed it on the sixth day. I just sat in the hut and just took it easy. Um, and then after that, it was just storm after storm after storm. Just could not get in. And as I say, then COVID hit. Hence I'm a bit croaky. And out of uh, practice of doing all this wild camping again. <laughs> Only three months, but it might as well be three years. Stella's gone back in good. I'm going to get a stove on. Why she crouches to have the pay, I don't know. So, this is on the last bit. There's enough to get us through the evening, I think, and to the early hours. Might be out about four in the morning cutting <laughs> more pieces of wood. That's if it's not snow. Not much wood about. Quite surprised. I was here June and I was chopping all the wood that had fallen around over there, if you can see. And uh, that's all gone. So people have used it, but all the storms you'd expect trees to be down. But I don't know if they've cleaned them up or, you know, because they might use it for logging themselves, you know, for their fires. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be cold tonight. I want to see how this... I've heard so many things about these uh, Po Molly tents. Uh, first thing I'll tell you... I don't know if you can see my phone, if it's going to focus... Probably not. Oh, yeah. The pegs are sharp. <laughs> you know, the ends on the top. It could do filing. The other thing is, they don't give you enough pegs. Uh, they give you enough pegs to peg out the tent as such, but not in the midsections of the tent, if you get what I mean, where there's elastics. Um, they do give you a spare couple of pegs, but I guess that's for the doors. There's two doors on it. The reason I've pitched it like that is I need... They said there was going to be no wind today. It's been really blustery. And uh, I need the stove face... It, because the pipe's short, I need it on that side. Sorry, you're going to probably unfocus. Uh, I need it on the back end because the wind's blowing from the north up there. So I need it blowing behind us. The last thing I want is all the smoke blowing in. Um, so yeah, I could probably do with another pipe section on that uh, stove to get it just about over the top. 
the other thing is the vent there's a big vent i'll show you tomorrow probably um on the other side but it has no velcro to close it or anything so if it's brona hooli all you're going to do is get a load of gusty wind so i put a stick against it to cl close the flap and just leave little little gaps you know what i mean so we're still getting air but i don't want it uh, blowing a gale in there so yeah you'll probably see the stove later on but i've got to get in i've been out the drive up like last night I drove from eight o'clock to I think five o'clock. The weather was terrible all the way through the UK. It was just rain and sleet and uh, uh, drizzle, heavy drizzle and mist. Then we got here, and when I mean here, I mean Glencoish, uh, what's it, Crane Lark, and that area. And it was dry, but very, very cold. So no rain, weird. What a weird country, eh? <laughs> You can be a mile down the road and you can be in a deep snow or heavy rain. Further up, it's just dry. This is the place that normally gets it. We managed to get across both rivers as well, which is... The second one was tough because it was getting close to the top of my boots, but I managed it. So, that's it for today. You'll probably see stove later on and that's just chilling. I've brought everything. I was carrying something like 200 pounds, not on my back, on a trolley. And I even brought a chair. And when I mean a chair, you know the ones you normally get to take to the seaside or something? You'll see later on anyway. <laughs> but I have to say it was worth every ounce of uh, aggro getting it here. Because I need a chair. I don't want to be sitting on a co floor. I've got a cot. And you can sit on a cot, but I'm scared that if you sit in one place all the time, you'll break the cot because it's not meant to be sit sitting on, it's meant to be lying on to distribute the weight. So I, last thing I want now is breaking when the temperatures are so cold. Because I've got no mats, I've got a, a foam mat for insulation and also one of them windscreen foil mats for more insulation. And then I've got a new sleeping bag which I'll go into probably tomorrow or maybe I might do later on. It's been hectic. But I thought I'd just show you. Uh, I would say temp is about one or two degrees at best. Very close to freezing. There's loads of ice all on the track down there, but the river hasn't frozen yet. So that could happen the next couple of days. Right, let's get this wood in and I'll see you later. Less now. And I've got a carbon monoxide monitor. <coughs> got some candles over there. They're on the grass. They're away from any anywhere near the fabric, so no issues there. I wouldn't leave them in the tent without me being here. Uh, have a dinner, some tweets, spaghetti bolognese. I really love that. I'm one of these people that does, doesn't like cooking. I don't come out to cook. I can do that at home. And if I want a steak, I'll have it at home. <laughs> I'm not lumping a steak in my pack. I've got enough gear to carry. Uh, initial impressions of uh, this tent. Absolutely brilliant. I'm not just saying that because I got it. <laughs> I'm impressed. There's a couple of things I would like to change. That vent, which I'll show you tomorrow. No velcro on it. You need velcro on it. What happens if it's thrown down, you know, sideways rain? It's just going to be thrown straight through the vent. Um, more pegs. If you want, see, peg there, then you peg at the other end in the corners, yeah? But they like you to peg. They put elastic in the mid, mid, mid areas. But... Uh, they don't give you enough pegs for that. They give you two spare, but I think that's because when you use the door, 
you use two pegs. So it's, I don't know why, you could easily use one. But uh, tent does come with an inner, not a canvas inner, but a basic inner. It's a half inner, sorry. So we could have used that, but again, we would have been all cramped in, in the half inner. Dry my towel. I will change different bits of gear and dry them. Um, dogs are in the fluorescent jackets because I want to see what they get up to when they go out in, in the middle of the night, uh, in the early parts of the night. Later on tonight, I will give them uh, their winter jackets, which are warmer. Reb will have a, a lighter jacket. He, he doesn't need a jacket. He's so solid a dog. Stove is a Highlander. Absolutely throws out lots of heat. Weighs a ton of it. Um, I haven't even weighed off him again because it would be so stupid too because he wouldn't achieve anything, are you? We know it's heavy, all this gear. Um, the stove jack I, I made smaller with another um, stove jack, if you get what I mean. Because the one you get, it's already pre-cut and you just fit, but it's big, it's too big for around the pipe. So if it rains or anything like that, it's just going to all come running down the side of the pipe. I've heard people say you can slant the pipe, out, you know, from inside to out. But then I've heard you that can cause problems with uh, wind rushing down the pipe and actually blowing smoke through... Uh, vents down here. This stove doesn't have a, um, what's it called, a, a damper. Don't ask me why. You could easily put one in, guess. St uh, pipe section, I might do that as a matter of fact. And actually, uh, but I don't really need it because the stoves always work fine with me. You use the vents down here, open and close, and you can sh slide them slightly shut and it still burns lovely. Trick to a stove, as you know, Get it nice and glowing, and then from then on, shut it off. Don't kind of go through your wood too quick, you know what I mean? Just open your damp, like open the vents just to get some heat out. In a bit, I'll shut it all up so it slow burns. I put a footprint on my own, and obviously, the fire protection uh, protective mat for the stove. This was the one that came off the Fairbanks. Did the job of the Fairbanks. Fairbanks is now sold. Nothing wrong with it. Brilliant tent. Absolutely brilliant. It was the very first tent I used for uh, hot tenting. I wasn't sure what to do, you know, if I was going to get into it or not. And phew, I'll tell you what, it's, it's such... I know I've been carting this gear today and it's absolutely killed me to get it in. But trust me, when it's in and you spend six days here and you've got a nice stove, a nice chair to sit in, and you've got a warm tent. I mean, what more do you want? You know, it's absolutely brilliant. I don't know if that was one of my dogs belching then when I was chatting. Um, as I say, initial impressions of this tent are really good. I've seen the odd fray, you know, not fray, um, loose thread. Um, that's picky, isn't it? Uh, oh, the door. You know, when the door opens, I'm sorry, I can't really get a good shot of the door because... I can't, this is as wide as it will go on this camera. Um, you either have to flap it all the way back and tie it. I'd like a mid-tie, so you could just tie the flap so far back. Because if you tie the flap all the, at this door, all the way back there, you've got a massive gap here, and the, it, the fresh air and all that comes flying through it. And in summer, yeah, probably lovely, flat, apart from the midges. But I mean, winter, you want it kind of cosier. So a mid tie off there would be brilliant. So you only have to open the door so much. I don't understand why you want to put a door all the way that far back. Might be me being picky, I don't know. Pole strong. I've used it more or less to its full extent. I wanted a, not a taut tent, but I didn't want to see it saggy. I put, uh, you've probably seen on the photos, I put uh, stones all the way round on the skirt. That's not because I'm thinking the wind's going to blow it. I'm, I'm worried about if we do get snow, you know, weather forecast this steep. Right now I'll shut it down a bit. Oh, sorry. There you go. I don't want to burn for it. Um, 
weather forecasters always get things wrong, don't they? So if they say tomorrow's going to get sn- we're going to get snow and it's only going to be light snow, there's always a chance there could be really heavy snow. And the last thing I want to do is come back if I've been out searching, caught in the snow drifts, uh, snow out there, get back, trudge through the snow drifts or whatever, and find my tent full of snow because it blew under. So I'm just being cautious on that one. That's about it. Dinner. I'm not having no pudding. I had a really nice hot dinner. As I say, spaghetti bolognese, something to eat. Perfect. I really like that. Nothing worse for me. I know other people like to cook on their stoves and everything and do a nice fry up and God knows what else. But I'm so busy with the dogs, so busy cutting wood. I know everyone else cuts wood, but I've got to make sure I've you know, most people can just hunker in a sleeping bag for about 12 o'clock and say, sod it, no more stove. But I have to think of keeping them pretty warm, you know what I mean? That's hardy, but Stella's old, you know what I mean? 13 in January, so she'll feel the cold. And she does. Um, anything else to tell you about? Very quiet around here, just the water running. There's a lot of cloud out in the moment. It could be snow, cl- uh, snow clouds. I was hoping to catch um, the northern lights because they've been seen all over Scotland and even further down south in the UK. But because of the cloud, I'm not going to see that tonight. Maybe during the week, I will. So, it's about 7 o'clock. I'm absolutely whacked. Oh, I got cramp a minute ago. First time I had cramp for ages. I was uh, setting up the cot and oh, cramp kicked in in one of my back of my calves. Oh, dear, 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 dear. I nearly screamed. <laughs> it hurt. Uh, so, yeah, tomorrow's searching. Um, I've covered most areas already. There will be a group of us going up after the snows melt uh, next year, going in high ground, uh, covering some of the not the tops so much, but we will be. But, I mean, covering the trails that lead to the tops because uh, there's always a chance Neil has wandered so far. I've been doing a lot of research online uh, whilst I was ill and also whilst the storms were going. And there is a hell of a lot of information on that, even from family members that posted more or less after Neil went missing straight away. And some of the stuff said is, you know, refreshing because... I, it filled in a lot of gaps and from what I gather, Neil did wander a lot and I'm not going to put any words into anyone's head or kind of give any innuendos or anything but I believe now that he wandered a long way. Uh, I always did. I always believed he went towards them valleys and up. I don't know why. It's just a feeling for me. So, but this week I'm covering... The wooded area opposite to where he camped, because I've not been there now. I've seen the fence down a certain, last time I was here, I'm hoping it's still down in one spot so I can get a dog's in. It's a hell of a place to search. It's so shrubby. Loads of ankle breakers, boggy trees, bushes, tussocks, everything. Oh, it's just a mess. But it has to be done. I've been training the dogs and uh, doing it my way. I I always do my training on all my dogs. Uh, never done anything like this, so it's a learning curve for me doing the searching. No, obviously not with Stella, she's too old to pick all that up now. She just trudges along with us. Um, we'll see how it goes. If it works, it works. If it don't, I've had nothing to lose. So yeah, I enjoy searching. I don't. I cannot give you a reason why I'm doing it. I just do not know myself. I wish I knew. It's just something that's got under my skin and I have to do it. Uh, I was going to help out in the Cairngorms and do the Ross Kinghorn one. Um, but I've been checking on the Facebook profile and there's loads of groups going up there on a regular basis. And they've got a lot of followers. So if I go all the way over to the Cairngorms and help with their search, which is, you know, and they need as many people as they can. The problem is this one's dying off and no one seems to be... I'm not saying... I haven't heard anyone doing it. You know what I mean? I'm guessing some people are doing it, but I haven't seen anything. So the last thing I want is this one to be kind of forgotten. You know, kind of... People shrug their shoulders and say, well, I don't know what's happening there, and they carry on somewhere else. So I started this. (coughs) 
I want to finish this, but I will be helping out in the Cairn Gorms with the Rust King on one and any others that come along. It's just something I enjoy doing, as I say. <coughs> I've had a lot of good comments from people saying, good on you. I'm glad, you know, you know, glad someone's taken interest. You know, it makes a change. You, all kinds of things have been said. It's nice to hear. But I have had a lot of negative comments as well. People saying that, why are you? I had someone say, well, if it floats your boat. I think that's really kind of negative view, isn't it? But uh, it doesn't float my boat. I'm not looking for glory. There's no medals. And mountain rescue teams don't get medals. I won't be getting medals. If I find someone who will inform the authorities, I won't be getting involved in all that. And I just move on. I'm just doing something I enjoy. So there's no ulterior motive and I'm definitely not doing it for YouTube <laughs> you know if you look back on my videos over the years you'll see that I don't care about uh, don't don't get me this, this wrong I I do care about the people that subscribe it's nice that people subscribe but I haven't done it with that in, initial uh, idea of getting loads of subscribers and kind of a, it doesn't interest me that making money or anything. I mean, from what I've heard, some people can make loads. I was struggling to estimate a few quid. Um, so, yeah, I'm not doing it for anything like that. And, uh, and I'm definitely not doing it to buddy-buddy with Mountain Rescue or anything like that. They've got their own ways. They're the professionals. I don't interfere with them. Um, they're out in all weathers doing their own... Uh, techniques and all that and they are the professionals to say so yeah i'm not getting in the way of that you know what i mean they i'm lucky i can choose when i come out these poor volunteers the boys men and women sorry um don't get a choice they get called up three four in the morning and in, in, in some of the worst conditions and i've been in some of them conditions and i wouldn't like to be called out of my bed to search in them conditions i mean that's that's hardcore that is so I uh, hope that answers everyone's kind of, I don't know, this, the negative ones, you know what I mean? <coughs> I've had some family members, not um, Neil's. Neil's family have been very, fr very friendly, very helpful, very open and very appreciative. Um, but I've had other family members very suspicious why someone would take an interest on a regular basis and kind of go out and search. So... Uh, and it's up to them. I mean, I've got nothing to hide. I'm not doing it for any, as I say, ulterior motives. So, you know what I mean? How many years I'll be doing it? I don't know. Maybe I'll get bored in a year's time. Who knows, eh? Right, enough rabbiting. I, I just wanted to cover a couple of lower aspects because I've been away for three months. I haven't put no videos out and there's some things I wanted to say and I don't want to go in depth in all of these. You know what I mean? I just want to cover them and move on doesn't interest me people are going to have no views whatever i say so it's up to them right i'll see you in the morning hopefully we have a nice warm night and see what i mean about the fire i've choked it as such closed the damper or the grill and look it's still burning nice and glowing that's just how you want it nice and slow right see you in the morning